you know, we've got it, we've got the technology, we've opened the artery, go home, pack up, and that's what most cardiologists do. Good. But, but, and they're always a but. Like most of medicine, life's a hell of a lot more complicated, but that's this is actually probably easier. Um, this is just reminding us that patients with significant stenosis of the medical people narrowing um, are at increased risk of future cardiac events. So that goes without saying that if you have lots of these, you're more likely to have a heart attack in the future. However, in the absence of acute coronary syndrome, that's a heart attack or recent MRI, and residual ischemia, elective, that is, just doing angioplasty to, because you've seen a narrowing doesn't actually help the outlook of people. And this is a really, really important point. Um, and that's not because it's a terrible technique. It's because it doesn't get to the root cause of why those buildups happen in the first place. And it doesn't, you know, what you have to understand is that the approach is to prevent further development, to prevent whatever narrowings you've got, to stabilize them, are really now quite well understood with the combination of preventative drugs that we now have to hand. Now the other aspect is that if someone has had an event, you can do something quite straightforward. So I think Judith did the talk about later. No? Okay. Um, you're gonna, and that is, if you just put people who've had heart attacks to exercise based rehabilitation, you can look at improvements in their outlook in the high 20s and 30 percent. Um, and that is equivalent to, and it's certainly better than we can achieve with balloons and stents. It's equivalent to what we achieve with aspirin and with the, the um, cholesterol lowering pills and statins. So these are, well, particularly for men, it may not look at all these figures, you know, you know what, but it's absolutely fundamentally important to, to the doctors and physicians. So when you discharge someone having done something, and believe me, you know, undertaking these procedures is challenging, um, but people and doctors do it because they also enjoy it. It's actually very nice when you've got some really narrow and loaded up and looks good and the patient feels better, but the job is not done. And that's what this is telling. But if you just leave it at that, these people are at risk of going on, doing it again. And so you have to concentrate on getting them better, which is where cardiac rehabilitation um, really focuses the mind. And if you do it, you improve outlooks very, very considerably and statistically significantly. And why? Well, just in a general way, you improve physical fitness. Um, with physical fitness, you reduce weight. I'll talk a little bit about weight, but not much. But the basic take-home message is this. Weight, per se, is less important than fitness. So if I have patients or two who come to me who are significantly overweight, I say, well, put that aside, we'll throw away the scale, not in what I want you to do is to get fitter. Because it has been shown that in terms of risk, the weight is less important than how fit you are. So you can have some quite overweight people who are very fit who are at low risk. And you can have some quite thin people who are very unfit who are actually high risk. So if you want to help your patient, um, you can do most good with immediate feedback if you get them fitter because you can go to a six week program and people will see benefits immediately and it's much more difficult where weight is concerned. And actually if you get people to get fitter, then they get fitter and fitter and they enjoy it more and they're able to do more and guess what, after a while their weight band measurement's gone down and they have actually lost some weight. And that's all about how you approach people with targets that are achievable and that you'll get you know, response and, and, and understand that you're helping yourself. If you're fitter and you've lost some weight, then the tendency to diabetes is diminished. Um, the HDL, that's one of the cholesterols, okay? HDL, happy cholesterol. H is for happy to the woman. And the higher HDL is, the better you are. And you can increase HDL, but virtually the only way is by doing more physical exercise. People who go to rehab tend to be better, um, we're better at helping them quit and keeping them off the cigarettes, partly because they're getting reminders all the time. Um, and very crucially, if you look at some studies on people given cholesterol lowering pills, after two years, 9% were take, still taking them. So that means 91% were not. And in terms of you and me paying our taxes, that is a monumental waste of everybody's time and money. Completely crazy. Whereas if you look at the private rehab, the 
adherence rates are up in the 90s for people staying with it because they understand how important it is. Markers of information reduced and the end of the URL end of being increased it again works better than you can We worked on this some time ago and there's a published standard of what everybody should be receiving. Not to go to this core component that couldn't be simpler. This electricity net size, diet and weight management, smoking cessation, education is something I'm doing now, so I have a big word, education, to use for just chatting. <laughs> Risk factor management, psychosocial um, support, making sure they take their pills and if they have any devices implanted to help them, and then long term management. Yeah, this one was brought to this photograph on a holiday recently. <laughs> 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 Uh, because if we looked at the statistical report, and it's the same for 2009, of well, the number of people that actually have proven benefits, that we know it works and helps, just 30% of those having angioplasty, which are the majority, less than half of those have had an infarct. But we do better with the heart surgery patients. But it, there is a huge underuse 